name is Owen134866 uh, and I'm a contributor to the TES website. Um, I've recently uh, uploaded what I've called the Maths Free Resource Library and uh, Craig Barnes asked if I can make a little video to go with it just to explain a bit of how it works. So that's what this is. Uh, I've never made a video before so uh, hopefully this will go uh, according to plan. Um, so uh, on the TES site you can see here, this is something I've uploaded, it's called Maths Free Resource Library. Um, it's basically a selection of lots and lots and lots of lesson resources, a lot of which I've uploaded to the TES, uh, a lot of which other people have uploaded to the TES, that I've all kind of uh, put together in a series of folders that you can uh, hopefully access quite easily. Um, now, because of the size of the uh, free resource library, I can't actually upload it to the TES. I've had to try to do a little bit of a workaround, um, which I'm also going to try and explain. Uh, so, um, just to show you what it would look like if you were to download this, uh, I've got this folder up here, Maths Free Resource Library. Uh, if I open it, uh, it has that again, uh, that was because when I uploaded it I had to create a new folder. And then when you go into that it looks like this. And I've split it all into seven sections. Now, uh, firstly, uh, these files are very useful, the Excel files with the title Index. But before I even look at any lessons, just to show you this one, uh, Index of Useful Websites. So if I open that, uh, it's quite small on my screen, but um, it's just a list of websites that at some point I've found useful and used in my teaching. Um, it has a little explanation of what they are, and these are all hyperlinked here. So, uh, for example, one of Craig's, uh, somewhere down here, diagnosticquestions.com. So it's a website of questions that you can use to diagnose pupils' misconceptions. So if you thought you might want to use that, uh, you can just click it there and it should open it in whatever uh, browser you've got. So mine is uh, Google Chrome, so there it is. Then you can have a look and see if it's useful. Um, other things there, so uh, some of it random, flashy math, that's got some games, math games in Flash Play and stuff like that. Um, but basically have a look through, see if there's anything useful to you. Right, that's that. So if I then go into these folders again, now this is where kind of the more useful stuff just for lesson kind of chunks is. So, uh, for example, if I go to Algebra, um, again, these are the areas of Algebra, and in each of these is kind of loads of PowerPoints, worksheets, Excel documents, videos, stuff like that. Um, some more than others, obviously some topics have a lot more in them. But again, I'd recommend you use the index that I've put there. So, if I open that, again, you've got an index here of everything that's in each of these folders. If you look at the bottom, there's a load of tabs, there's equations, so that corresponds to the equations folder that's there. Graphs, obviously that then corresponds to graphs and so on. So uh, imagine you were teaching a lesson uh, on graphs, and let's say it is um, using one graph to solve another, which can be quite a difficult uh, GCSE topic to teach. Um, so for example, you can have a look in here, look in the graph section, see if you can find what you want. Um, there's a title, uh, the type of file there little description of what it is and these here are hyperlinks to the documents in there so for example in graphs all these documents there are hyperlinked into this excel spreadsheet so if you were thinking i want to teach a lesson on using one graph to solve another you may look down find it here so you may have a read so how to use one graph to solve another shows if you change two graphs the x value stay constant that kind of thing if you want to think maybe that's what i want to use uh, click the powerpoint there and it'll open it and you can maybe have a bit of a look through and obviously there's animations in here that if you wanted to look at it in a bit more detail. You can also see with that lesson there's a worksheet here so again you can open that see if it's what you want. If it's not what you want keep looking if it is what you want then well that's some time sorted. And that works the same for inequalities, matrices, sequences and so on stuff at the bottom. One thing I'll draw your attention to now as well is at the side here um, I've tried to make a big effort to uh, hyperlink people who've c whose stuff I've used here. So obviously this is just how I've organised the stuff I use in my teaching. So there's quite a lot of my stuff in there. However, I've also used a lot of things from other people, from a lot from the TES website. So for example, if you look here, um, just a quick one, maybe equations challenges. So challenge questions on equations. So it's a PDF. So there's quite a lot of uh, challenging questions to go through there. Uh, and if you use this kind of thing, I think it would be really nice if you then have a look at who con contributed it. So this is Tez Mark Greenaway. That's also a hyperlink. So you can then click on that, go to his profile, and actually just send a quick message there and just say, thanks, I used your resource, it was really good, that kind of thing. Um, just because I think it's really nice to say thank you when kind of people have, have, uh, have when you've used someone's stuff. Uh, I don't do it enough myself. 
So that's kind of what it looks like. It's the same sort of thing for uh, everything else. So if you go into geometry, same structure, index, number, same structure, index, and so on. Then statistics. Then you've got A level. A level looks slightly different. So if I open the A level one and just get rid of the algebra one. Uh, no, I don't want to save it. So A level then. So there's core one resources, core two, core three, core four. Don't have everything. I've never taught D1, so I just don't happen to have anything for that because I've never done it. You could obviously put your own stuff in there. FP3, same thing. Um, but in each of these, uh, I've put a folder here. So if you click folder, that's the same one like further pure two, further pure one. So if you click folder, uh, in there is um, past exam papers and answers, and that's for Edexcel because I've always ended up using Edexcel. Um, so if you taught OCR or AQA, you may want to put your own stuff in there. But either way, I think there's a lot of overlap, so it's similar types of questions. Uh, and that's the same for all. So Core 4, there's past papers for Core 4 and so on. Um, and yeah, they're all hyperlinked and so on. So that's just a, a level. It looks a bit different, but it's the same kind of thing. If I then go back to the last two folders, revision and tests. So this is just random stuff I've used for revision and tests. So key stage 3 and 4. Uh, SAT papers, so there's some s old SAT papers in there if you wanted to use those. I know levels are disappearing, but we're still using them at my school at the moment. Uh, mark schemes, 10 for 10 revision questions and stuff like that. And for Key Stage 4, uh, past papers, um, we're doing Cambridge IDCSE, so I've got loads of stuff for that. Um, AQA in there, because we did AQA, uh, GCSE, you may want to put Edexcel or whatever you're doing in there as well. Um, revision work, so some work that's uh, been done for revision, so again that's indexed. These are just loads and loads of sheets of questions on one particular topic. Down here you've got some maybe more interesting stuff, so here's uh, from Dan Walker on the PES uh, A-star paper, so it's basically an exam paper but it's just A-star questions. There's a sheet, a really good sheet here I've used for functional questions from uh, math.com or m4th.com, uh, not sure how to say that, probably math.com. Uh, PDF there, functional questions um, so if you wanted more longer wordy questions then those are there and they're really useful. Uh, finally the last folder, number seven, other, this is just stuff I couldn't fit in anywhere else. Um, same kind of thing, four folders here, displays, fun stuff and investigations, gifted and talented, puzzle of the week. So if I go into the index, displays, just some stuff you might want to use as displays on your walls. Here, what's the point? Uh, posters, there's a lot of them, so rather than put loads of links, I've just put a link to a folder, so you can choose there if you want to put any up. Fun stuff of investigations, this is just very random selections of things that might be uh, useful. Uh, I've included stuff like dingbats, um, uh, something else somewhere lower down, uh, can't find it. Some maths investigations there, locker room puzzle, uh, PowerPoint of grids, so that's a PowerPoint with loads of grids that you might want to use on your on the board if you haven't got access to that kind of thing. Um, loads of random stuff in there. Oops. Uh, gifted and talented, so math challenge papers in here. Um, also mentoring, which I found very useful with some of the top ability uh, kids. So junior math mentoring papers, so here it's a folder. For example, 2013 to 2014. Um, I get sent from the UK Maths Trust mentoring stuff. So, for example, the junior October for that year, it's just a set of kind of a bit more difficult questions. They're more difficult than the Maths Challenge, but they're quite good to give to a top set and have them stick in their book. And if they happen to finish what they're doing in class, they can just go on to these. Uh, and there's answers as well if you need those. And they're there for intermediate senior uh, as well. And finally, just Puzzle of the Week, which is another random thing I've put in there. I tend I make puzzles that the kids do each week. Um, and in there you've got a uh, Word document which is a puzzle a week for the whole school year and answers there as well. Um, yeah, so that's it. It's only got two and a bit years worth at the moment. I'm adding to it. So that's the Maths uh, Free Resource Library. Um, it's I find it saves me a lot of time. Most people who I've shown it to have been quite positive. Um, obviously you can add your own stuff to it so it's all editable. Um, and you might be thinking, uh, if you've seen that, you might think, well how can I get hold of this? So. How can you get hold of this? Um, well, it's on on the TES website. As I've said earlier, you can't. I can't upload it because it's loads of folders and it's really big and it just doesn't work. And I can't upload. I can't zip it and upload a zip file because that's not allowed. So what I've had to do is upload a couple of Word documents. One which explains how to access it a bit, like I'm about to, and a little readme there. So if you want to access it, you need to open this here, accessing the resource library. Um, 
which is quite a big folder because I've put some pictures in it. Uh, here, kind of explains how what I'm about to explain in words in case you need to check it. Uh, the easiest method is to open a Dropbox account. If you don't know what Dropbox is, Dropbox is kind of an online sharing um, website, I suppose. What I do is on my desktop here, um, on my desktop I've got it here, Dropbox. That's basically a folder on my computer and I just put whatever I want in there and it, it automatically uploads it to my Dropbox account. It's a bit like if you plug um, an iPod into your computer, it kind of synchronizes it with iTunes. It, it does it in that way. So if I drag a, fol a file here or something, it will then upload it automatically to Dropbox for other people to access. So basically, if the easiest way is to get your own Dropbox account. Once you get your own Dropbox account, you can click the link that I've put here in red. Hopefully that's fairly obvious to see. Um, and hopefully this will work. So it opens there, and this is on my Dropbox account. Okay. So if you want to get the free resource library, uh, as it is on here, the whole folder, then what you need to do is on the Dropbox, you can right-click it, I think, and click Download. Now, I don't have that option because this is my account, so I already have it, so it won't let me do that. But you, if you right-click it, it should say Download. Or so I think it could say Download there, up at the top, where I've got Share. Again, because I've got the file, it doesn't offer me the chance to download it because I already have it. So for you, it should somewhere on that screen say Download. And it's about two gigabytes, so if you're going to download it, you probably want to download it and then go off and do something else for about uh, 20 minutes or however good your, well, depends how good your internet connection is. So that's the easiest way. Uh, I'd recommend that. There's no reason not to kind of sign up for Dropbox. It's free. It doesn't seem to have any problems with it. And then you can get access straight away. And also, I believe that if I then upload something to mine, it will then synchronize back down to yours. So it will, if I put a, fo a file or something in it, it will then go up into my free resource library here and it will then go down to yours when you turn your computer on I think or if you already asked it to. Um, now if you don't want to uh, download Dropbox um, there's no reason not to but if you want to if you kind of really don't like having that kind of thing on your computer uh, there is another way but it's a lot more complicated um, the same thing applies you go into this here however obviously it won't then have your login or anything up there you will then have to click free resource library and you have to kind of download each of these folders separately the reason is if you don't have a Dropbox account it will only allow you to download up to one gigabyte at a time and obviously this is n nearly two gigabytes as I said before so you can't download the whole thing at once so you have to do one file at a time and to do that what you have to do is you don't uh, click download here if I want to download the algebra folder you have to actually click it and go into it so once you're into the algebra folder you can then click, again for you it will be up here, it will say download, you can then click download and it will download this folder and you will have, after that, you will basically have that folder there, the algebra folder with everything in it. Uh, then what you'll have to do is uh, go out of that um, and then go into geometry and measures, do the same thing, click download and it will download all of that into a folder. Um, so that'll take you a bit longer, it's still workable, uh, obviously also you won't get the updates when I s put something new in it, so uh, you won't be able to get that, but uh, if you'd rather not download Dropbox, then that's probably the best way to do it. So uh, hopefully that's all clear, hopefully you've seen kind of what the free resource library is. Uh, please read here, please, I've put called it please actually read me in a desperate attempt to get people to read it. Um, please do read it, it's just a bit of a how it works and a little bit of kind of legal stuff so all the stuff I've put in it as far as I'm aware it's free, it's either come from a TES or somewhere else, uh, however there obviously is a chance that maybe there's something that um, I've been given or th that maybe shouldn't be in there because you're supposed to pay for it, if you find something like that, uh, please let me know and I'll remove it if you find something that's yours that I haven't uh, credited you for then please uh, let me know and give me a link and I'll put that in there as well so hopefully that will be really, really useful to you. Uh, if you have any problems with accessing it or if there's anything you want to ask me, um, please send me an email on the TES website. Uh, but please do read the README first because I've tried to answer as many questions as I can in that. Um, great, right, uh, thank you. So please...